Upon investigation, it turns out that native English speaking people rarely, if ever, use the word patrimony. I mean, rarely, if ever. It just never appears. On the other hand, the French people who occupy this country along with the English people use the word patrimony, I wouldn't say frequently, but it's a recognizable word in common usage. And what does it mean today? Well, generally speaking, it means the things about the culture that we hold in particular esteem, something like this. If you investigate it at the level of academic anthropology and so forth, you find that they employ exactly the same word to describe uh, things like this, how things are made, the particular material culture of a given place. The understanding being that there's something about the people and their understanding of life that's manifest in how they make the things that are necessary to their lives. But how is this impossibly related to the word father? which is the root word of patrimony. And one of the answers would be, well, the understanding is that fathers are not people. Fathers are not even a gender order. Fathers are a function. They're a mandatory cultural function that some people occupy for a time and then proceed otherwise and other people fill in for them and otherwise and so forth. And it seems to be related of all things to the human reproductive cycle or the mammalian reproductive cycle. Oh, really, could you tell us more? <laughs> it goes like this, they say, that the, the mammalian reproductive system is highly attuned to the environment. In fact, to the point where the reproductive system will decide that the moment is not promising to conceive. Basically, as a consequence of the um, hard to live circumstances that the people are going through, the lack of a sense of well being, that's probably the primary one. So, without a sense of well being, it doesn't matter how much copulation there is, the possibility of procreation is minimal. And people would take their guidance from that. So they say, and one of the ways they do so is to understand that the future or the past, perhaps a better way to say it, the past of the people is contingent upon the ability to make that enabling environment that where the sense of that all things, all manner of things might yet be well can prevail. And that's what patrimony is, is the provision of that sense of well-being that precedes procreation. Now, I'm not just talking about insemination procreation. I'm really talking about every sense of what's possible, including the things that are mandatory for a time as troubled and troubling as this one. That there has to be, it would appear that our, our very reproductive system is giving us instruction and discipline and saying no, just as Jamie has said. And it turns into something like maybe, according to our willingness to undertake the work of making a circumstance where a sense of well-being is yet available. And shaming all things masculine will not get us there. I think anybody who's fair-minded can acknowledge that. And so one of the ways to, to conjure a sense of well-being is to restore some legitimacy to the understanding that the act of fathering is not the act of procreating a human being. The act of fathering is a cultural function. It's, it's, uh, it sounds a bit Neanderthal, no? But it is to make a working environment wherein the, the bringing into new life makes sense, can work, is legitimate seems called for, seems the very answer to the prayers of the ancestors and the gods of place and time. Go and ask the, your elders, the people close to you, and say, how? How are you beginning to be a father? In my tradition, uh, I, I, when I learn, 
a really young person maybe 16 15 16 when i go to the circle of elders and in the beginning we have three three groups basically the elders elders that talking is like seven seven eight guys talking there the second circle there is people between maybe 30 to 50 60 that is the ones that listen what the elders talking, but also sometimes ask questions. And we have the other group, the people around. I think it is the young people, we don't have the permission to ask questions. We need to go and be quiet and silence and just listen the people to talk. And there, I realized that it's not what I believe that the young people is outside and the older people is in. It's because I am not a father. When I have my first child, is the moment that I receive the invitation to be part of the second circle. The ones that have the possibility to ask questions. And to share in some points when you have the permission. And my elders explained to me, if you don't know how to take care, if you don't have the responsibility to take care of somebody, how do you go to ask questions? Because you don't know. And I realized that the other part is the ones that is grandpas. If you don't be a grandpa, you don't know how is to love somebody with no responsibilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you don't know how to be there. So it's a natural state. And in this point, we're growing. And the challenge right now for many young people is that nobody likes to be responsible. We don't like to feel responsible for anything. And many of the new movements is coming from there. Mm. Many of the new points of view is coming from there. How I move, how I jump in to be in, this, in the main circle with no pass in the other part. Wow. Mm. One day I go to my elder and he know that I, sometimes I do like healing sessions and, and he came and he said, Jamie, I have this, I have this. And I, for me, it's a privilege, you know, but also it's a test. So I say, Master, why you don't do this, 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 this? <laughs> and in the end, he said to me, ah, when you are young, you know everything. When you are older like me, you don't know nothing. You see, uh -huh. sometimes young people think that we know everything. And we forget to respect the elders <laughs> that have a long... My master says something beautiful. He say, you need to respect. If somebody is born one minute before you, mean that see this life one minute, one minute more than you. So respect. Mm 